Hi, it's Anne, and we're getting ready for the holidays. I thought it'd be fun to make another pocket today for our Christmas journal and to do, uh, to do it using a junk mail window envelope. I mean, we always, we have lots of these, don't we? And it's really fun to use them where we can really capitalize on this clear acetate window. So I was thinking it might be fun to make kind of a wintry scene using a little bit of collaging and a little bit of stamping. Let's let's just see how it goes. I'm gonna bring a glue page over here. This is a one that I cut off. What I had in mind was to sort of build kind of a wintry scene on the underneath. Uh, one of these windows and to do it with um, with book page. So let's let's just do that and we'll see how it works. I did a little a little bit of practicing, not to, uh, not not a complete thing. Um, I'm using a book page that I've put some gesso over over the text, so it's a little more faint because I'm going to be doing some stamping on top of it and I thought I would just have two of them overlapping. I might make this one the first one because that's kind of a steep a steep incline and let's make this one a little a little more level. And my thought was to overlap them and do some stamping. Oh, let's just ink and see uh, see how that looks. I keep being so casual about this and saying, oh, we'll see how it looks. I don't know. But that's the nice thing about, about doing our holiday crafting uh, early. We're not rushed to get anything finished, are we? It's fun to get things finished, but we don't have to don't have to think, oh gosh, I have to finish this gift journal by tomorrow morning. Nope, that's not what we're doing here. We're taking our time, we're enjoying, we're, we don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. We can spend as much time as we want to or don't want to. Just using a little bit of glue stick on this um, On the back of this dictionary page. Oh, I don't like these. Sometimes old literature doesn't look so great in the present day, does it? There we go. I want to I want to leave a fair amount of that acetate window showing. So there's, there's that, that's just a little bit of an incline. And let's see how this looks. I might actually do, I might do a little bit of light blending through here. I've inked the edge, but just to kind of give that a little bit of a different cast since I did not coffee dye this paper. of a thick torn edge with all the fibers of that book page exposed. It's gonna show up show up better against something solid. Yeah. I kind of like that. So this is gonna be our window portion that's exposed. And I might trim this off to be nice and flat on the bottom. I do love to layer torn book pages on top of each other to make a little bit of a landscape. I just think that's just such a nice look.
There we go. Now my plan was to cut this on either side and have this be sort of a narrow pocket. That's gonna be not quite three and a half. This will this will be a, a, a little pocket. I have some wider ones I'm doing, but I could I could end up doing several of these if I want. I'm okay with this uh, being the size that it is. And let me go ahead and cut that, and then we'll be working with our final size. Let's see how this is going to look. Left a little bit of that acetate, or a little bit of that envelope edge. I want to get right down to the acetate. There we go. And this is the back, so I'm gonna, I can make this as deep as I wanted, but since it's being, it's kind of a small pocket to begin with, I don't want it too, too deep. Certainly you could cut this wider if you wished to and have had, you know, you could have, um, you know, collaged on the sides and had, you know, had stuff on either side of that acetate window. There's di many different ways that we could bring this to fruition. But right now, I don't know if you can see, let me come up here. You can see that this, here's the edge of the acetate window and that's gonna be the top of our pocket. This one's gonna be a little pocket. So we'll not get too, too much on there. And then we're going to do some stamping, and then we're going to add some snow. In my mind, this works. So I have this uh, Stampin' Up! Uh, set from, I don't, know, I don't know how many years I got this. Not too many years. Maybe three years ago. And there's all kinds of really good little trees in here. So I'm just going to pull out, this is called Snow Front. There's a lot of different trees and uh, some little deer. So I think I'm just gonna get out several of these trees and I think this little deer and we'll see how that, see how that works. There's a really cute little cabin on here. I, I really like this for, for holiday cards. Um, but let's put this big, Christmas tree or forest tree. It looks like a one of our beautiful Douglas firs that we have here in Oregon. And we're gonna do just a little stamping here. And make that a little bit of a focal point. And I'm gonna take the second gen and Get one a little more in the background there. And I don't usually have a rag to wipe those things off. There it is. Let's try maybe another shade of green. All greens seem to go together. Maybe I'll put both of these together on the same little acrylic block. It's very faint in the background, which is fine. And I think I'd like to get these little deer in there too. When I have used this stamp set for um, for holiday cards before, I just think these little these little creatures. Oh my goodness! I got a nice little blob on myself there, didn't I? 
Oh well. I'm not expecting any members of the royal family to be dropping over anytime soon, so I think I'm okay with that. Um, let's just go ahead and put these little deer right here. Yes, they look cute. And I'm gonna go back into my greens. And hmm, can't quite decide what I want to do. I think I'm gonna go just with this middle sized green, middle sized tree. And just sort of stamp away. I'm thinking I might want to add just a touch of red there. I do have some little cardinals that are sweet in here. They're tiny, but it's, I have used them quite a bit. Do I have a red here? I have this one that I think still has some juice in it. I realize I am so lucky to have this nice collection of, of uh, stamping of ink pads. I've had many of them for quite a few years. I'm gonna stamp this on some Scrap paper, yes. Just needed to make certain it was pointed in the right direction because sometimes with the little ones, it's hard to tell. Let's put one up here. And I'm going to be unable to resist doing the other one. Although the other one's not a cardinal, so it can't be red. How about if I put another cardinal down in this area. Would a cardinal be feasting on the ground? No, it would not. It would be up in the tree. And there we go. Now, I'm going to be mounting this. I think I'm going to mount it on this piece, little piece of blue cardstock that I have uh, uh, run through um, my embossing machine, so it has just a little bit of texture. That is not necessary. But for this next step, I do think it'll be nice to, um, to have a dark background. I'm gonna use this here so you can kind of see what's going to show up a little bit more. I'm going to use my pen. This is not the Posca brand. This is something inexpensive I got off of Amazon. But I'm going to just put a little bit of snowfall here. problem for me is making them random so they don't look like they're <laughs> falling down in straight lines. I have them a little straighter than I than I want to. And I'm going to have them coming down into this scene a little bit. And this is just this acrylic paint. And this is already a little bit white, but I don't know that I yeah, that, this is not a necessary step. If you look really, really close, you can see that there's some snow on the ground here, but not that much, not that much. I think this is gonna be cute. It's gonna be small, but I think it's gonna be cute. I want to make certain that this uh, dries really nicely and um, 
let me set it aside and then we'll come back because I want to show you how I'm going to mount it uh, to become a pocket in a journal. So we'll be back in, as soon as this dries. Okay, these little acrylic paint snowdrops are dry and I think they look so cute on that acetate junk mail window. And I love it on this dark blue. I think that that looks really nice and really wintry and it's sort of a night sky and it's quiet and hushed in the woods and, and, and I like that a lot. I did an additional one to show you. This one's not quite dry yet, so I'm gonna be careful picking it up. But this is one that I did and I just put a few uh, die cuts on there, some die cuts that I had ready uh, uh, to put on a card. And I think that that one looks nice also. I don't know if you can tell the snow I did with this one. I did with a spatter technique. I took a, a, a watercolor brush and just put a little white gesso on that and, you know, did the flicking uh, of the um, uh, of the, the gesso spatters on there. So that gives some pretty good coverage as well and looks nice and snowy and shows up on the design below and on that book page a little bit without smearing anything. What I was afraid of is if I took this acrylic pen and did uh, the dotting down here on this green ink that it would it would begin to run because moisture in this uh, uh, water-based ink sometimes don't play well together. So anyway, two different ways of making that snow, your white acrylic pen or your, um, uh, uh, or a little bit of white gesso that you're just going to spatter. I want to show you how I am going to attach this. This is the problem with attaching a pocket out of this acetate or any kind of clear plastic, including vellum, is that your um, attachment, your 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 glue shows along um, along the edges, um, you know, wherever you're going to attach it. I think um, so. I use double-sided tape and that works actually pretty well it's you can see it a little bit but it's you know it it's it works you know it works and uh it's not a it's not a distracting thing i'm gonna go ahead and round these corners because i want to mount the entire pocket piece in my little journal here but I don't want to put the acetate right down on the page. I want to put it on this backing because I want that night sky to show through. Um, you know, I might as well, as long as I'm rounding, I might as well round these bottom corners as well and ink that just a little bit. Just to make it stand out. Now, let's get this adhesive tape in place. <laughs> you can tell that I spattered this one over here because I spattered my hands also. I'm gonna really have to, have to get myself cleaned up here before I do anything else. We're actually going to chess club this afternoon. Dan and I volunteer at our grandson's chess club, his little after school activity on on Mondays, which is when I'm filming this. I hope I didn't get too bad of a pleat in there. I got a little bit of a pleat. It might straighten out after I take that release tape off. This is just a quarter inch double-sided tape that I, I have been using more recently. I'm not worried about getting it all the way to the bottom because I'm going to be getting it here on the bottom to seal up the bottom of that 
of that little pocket. I grab a needle. And pry that tape off. Yeah, when it's when you use a wet glue, it does make kind of a gloppy, uneven um, uh, residue that you continue to see through your vellum, through your acetate, through any kind of clear plastic. Um, but something that's really sheer, like a uh, like a glue stick, just doesn't hold. So I. I, when I've had reason to glue acetate onto something, I've had a decent luck with double-sided tape. So I'm going to come right down with this and there we go. Boom, folder will help. And you can see it is visible. So you look and you could tell that little pleat there is unfortunate, but. And it's visible more so than it would be if it were on a flat piece of paper because I have put that texture into this paper that I'm adhering it to, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be okay with that. So that's, let me get up here so I can, you can see, you can, you can tell where that double-sided tape is, but it really isn't too bad. I would call that good enough. And what a nice little pocket this makes. I don't have any kind of a tag for it yet. We'll do that in the, we're gonna do more tags <laughs> in the weeks ahead, but you can tell how cute that's gonna look in a journal. Setting this aside carefully, I do love that really thin spatter. Even though I got one big glob over here, that's fine. Sometimes you have big, big chunks of snow that fall. But let's go ahead and get this into our holiday journal. That's gonna be filling up nicely here pretty soon. Where do I wanna put this? I think I'd like to put this in a little touch of red, little touch of red over there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this on this page. So we'll be doing some tags soon. Although I do have one more pocket uh, project that I wanna do next week before we get to too many tags. Usually the tags come more easily to us uh, than the pockets. I find that's often the case when we're prepping our junk journals. So it's kind of good to get a little stash of pockets uh, done um, before, uh, before we do the official tags. For now, I'm just gonna put this little, that little piece of, um, of music page with, uh, um, with some napkin on it. Let me just kind of cut that off. And I'm just gonna tuck that in there for now as a placeholder. I think that looks really cute. I hope you enjoy this, guys. Get out those junk mail envelopes and uh, start doing a little collaging stamp on them. Load up some die cuts. Uh, do whatever you like to make give them a nice little home in your journal. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.